and try this sitting down once to see if this is better or not. Okay. All right, we got microphones on both sides. Start whenever you're ready. The last time we talked to you, um, the transfers hadn't been on campus yet. Yeah. So holistically with the transfer class, what do you feel like is kind of the, the biggest need you guys filled with it? Well, I, I think, again, we, we, we look to improve some things defensively, um, get ourselves in uh, a position depth-wise. We, you know, it's probably something we'll talk about all the way up till, you know, first game and, and beyond that we have to be better defensively and, and, and through some of the, uh, you know, graduation and attrition, we, we had to address some things there, and I, I like I like what we've been able to do. Today was one of the first days really be around the guys, kind of see them run around, do some things. I, I think we've added some speed and some physicality, and and uh, that was obviously a priority. And and then I think again, you, again the offensive line, we wanted to look in there as uh, you know bringing in um, Spencer and Logan. Um, Bigger bodies, you know, um, and uh, you know, losing Earl, um, we want to keep adding, you know, competition and depth in that. In that, even though the other four return, we want to make sure that there we keep keep the competition and depth and and things going there that gives us more opportunities um, to mix and match and and play some guys in different spots. At the start of camp, we talked a lot about the offensive line depth and you mm -hmm. wanting to build that out. I guess. Since August first, how pleased are you with the the additions you guys have had, and maybe building some of that depth? Oh, I like where I I think we're making good progress. Is it exactly where we want? You know, uh, you know, in fall camp we lost James Livingston um, early to a broken leg, and he came back again. One of those great benefits of being in a bowl game was he returned for practice, and and you know recouped some of that time, um, kind of. You know, overcome that hurdle of what's it going to be like going back out there. So now he's kind of hitting it running. Um, Kobe Baines, I thought, has been a nice addition. He brings us some flexibility. He's been mainly playing tackle, but really started off when he got here inside as a guard, uh, physical player with really good feet. Um, but, you know, he joined us, you know, towards the end of camp or midway through. So that's tough. So, and of course, uh, Amar J. Adams Reed's a guy that just is a, another guy who continues to get better and grow. And uh, there's a couple other guys at other positions, and, and bringing up Amar J. kind of is one of those things where um, we all want things to happen now and immediately, but some guys are going to kind of grow through the process in many different ways through the, the maturing process, whether it be just personally or understanding the speed of the game or the offense and schematics, a lot of those things. And I think he's really put himself in a good position to help us. Um, we've had to use Michael Ford in a lot of different spots, not necessarily in games, but in practices. Uh, uh, you know, Mike Nowitzki has got banged up late in the year. He, he had some post uh, postseason surgery, so it's kind of limited. But, you know, Michael's had to play some center as well and played some tackle. And that helps you, but sometimes late in the year that also hurts you in continuity and the real reps that you're going to need for games because you're, you know, you're you're kind of trying to cover the what ifs. And I think you know, even watching the NFL, all of a sudden you don't know the what ifs and how many quarterbacks you're going to go through and what it's going to be and the contingency plans. And and sometimes when you when you plan for that, you're taking away some of the other things. But I do think we're moving in that direction. Like I said last year, I think I probably didn't realize it in the midst of that first season, how much we lost off that second offensive line. You know, we thought, you know, we had the starters, but it, it, the gap of development and, and losing some of those guys, uh, you know, um, was something that uh, we knew we had to address now. Can you talk a little about Logan and what you guys saw from him and maybe just the, the vetting process you guys did with him? Well, you know, obviously he was a pretty highly recruited guy. Um, you know, he, you know, it's kind of like when he came on his visit, and about you know half the, you know, a couple of other guys like, like, you know, holy cow, who's that guy? You know, and he's like, you know, it's a different looking body. Um, you know, great person. You know, we 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 knew enough people in the Wisconsin program. Um, a change of uh, a senior is probably good for him. Um, it doesn't. 
you know, it doesn't give, you know, he's not assured anything here, but everything that we went through and getting to know him and uh, really matched up. I, um, Coach Gildersleeve, um, you know, is from that same area in Michigan, has lived and, and, and his high school strength coach and Coach Gildersleeve, you know, knew each other. And, and so there was a commonality there that everything Logan was kind of looking for in some other ways that um, he felt very comfortable. Um, so there's a lot of things that matched up, and you check the boxes, and uh, we're awful excited to have them. Hey, Lance. Yep. I don't know how far you've gone away to ever get a recruit, but the, your punter from Australia, I didn't know if you could Yeah, I didn't that. get a home visit out of that curb, so I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm going to try to, though. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, we've you know, we, we got to be better in special teams. Um, and uh, we got to be better uh, in, in both kicking and punting. Um, you look at a lot of things that, that happen. A lot of people have gone that route. And uh, we felt we found a good one. And uh, he'll arrive this summer and, uh, and continue working on his craft down there and with his, his training people. So um, again, uh, yeah, and, and I now I'm sitting, but I stood before you last year and said we're going to create a culture of competition, and we have to continue to do that in each every way. And that, and and I think, uh, and we we have done so in kicking and punting as well. You lose Lonnie Phelps after the early signing day, and then you come yeah. back with Joiner. Can you just talk about what you saw in him? Yeah, you know him and Austin Booker both. You know, again, are going to help us. We we lost, you know, Malcolm Lee, Zion Dubose as well. Yeah, you know, happy for Lonnie, um, you know, selfishly disappointed for us. But again, at the same time, to see where Lonnie's at and the opportunities he's getting in the Senior Bowl and the Combine um, is really a tribute to, to him and his what he was able to do here and really throughout his career. Um, and But, you know, full disclosure, you know, Lonnie was pretty upfront with us where this was all trending from from the start, uh, I'm mean, you know once we finished the regular season, and is it, and to his credit, even to Earl's credit, with a lot again, I think it's says a something about those two guys, uh, the rest of our seniors, um, you know we didn't have guys opting out, okay, and and they and you know Earl was talking to me about his All Star opportunities, and here I thought he was going to tell me he wasn't going to play, and he oh no I'm not I'm not missing. The, this opportunity for this program and to be with my teammates and the same same thing with Lonnie, so um, that that was uh, this is, I want to make sure that those guys uh, and you know kind of where where they were at with us. Uh, Patrick's one that again we looked at uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, the, as you guys are well aware, the portal is, moves really fast now in the month of December, evalu evaluating a lot of people and. And then it's a scramble to get uh, people that that are going to squeeze in those times for those visits and to get Patrick here and the places that he's been and what he's trying to do is somebody that I, I think along with Austin Booker is going to give us uh, you know great competition and depth and and people that have played in college football games that can help us get better. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. Uh oh, you guys get through the season. You go to bowl practice. You go to the bowl. You come back. I think you had one weekend off, and then you got portal guys visiting. That goes through now, and then the portal is going to kick back up here in April. Is there anything they can do to ease this up on you guys? I'm sorry to ease up. To ease this or make it a little um, easier. To they're time talking manage. about it. There's something. In fact, there's something coming up that I've got to. Um, respond to some questions stuff that we're looking at and there's there, there's talks uh, the the problem that we that I don't you know it's easy to have a lot of suggestions but to have actual pure solutions that work um, is always been a, a tough thing and and then again you know what's everybody's agenda I, I'd like to get the best agenda for everybody that's the high school player the portal player the parents <laughs> The assistant coaches, spouses, anyone that has to work on a recruiting weekend. Like you're right, because you know, half you know, three quarters of the staff didn't go to our convention that you normally go to we don't have time. And um, we just have to find a way to balance the high school calendar, our 
season and bowl calendar, spring ball, end of school year. Some people are semesters, some are trimesters. When you're going to open this up, when does summer school start? There's, there's just a lot of, you know, and you cover recruiting, so you're looking at this, but there's other angles, you know, and then it's like, well, these schools are going to have spring football. These people don't start till this time, and when can you go out, and, and how many days can people, you know, come on your campus, and how many times can you go out, and it's, uh, it's tough. It's, you know, there's, there's concern in this profession for the assistant coaches especially. You know, is you know at at this point with everything that's changing, um, as we gravitate more to a you know it's always been a twelve month deal in a different way, but but the travel and the other things and now the weekends that kind of continually bleed into each other, uh, you know there's concern that a lot of guys are going to try to get to professional football before this becomes professional football. Uh, Coach, what have you seen from Demarius McGee, and how can he impact the team on the defensive end? Well, he he was, like I said, I just saw the guys today, and he's just kind of getting going. Is um, he, uh, you know, because of his commitment, signing, getting turned around, he wasn't cleared for everything. He's only he's only been going for about seven seven days of workouts, but uh, very talented guy, great cover skills. Again, um, you know, somebody that is. You know, played good snaps in a, in a high high quality program. So we hope again that that's going to help us depth, and not meaning that he's going to push for time. He's going to be in different packages, and again, it's a, it's an opportunity for our team to get better. And, and in fact, when I was on the road here last week, uh, ran into a coach from his former school and. And he had nothing but positive things about him. And if he stays healthy and does the things that he needs to, um, he doesn't see any reason why that he won't be a fine addition and help this team. You guys obviously lost the, the top three defensive tackles in terms of snaps. Can you just talk about what Gage and, and Devin bring? Well, athletic, athleticism, quickness, strength. You know, Devin's a big body, you know, wide body. He's not the tallest guy, but. Uh, Played a lot of football. Uh, Gage is a guy who's a former basketball player. He's he's played a little inside, a little outside. Um, so really anxious to see what they can give us in in, in that. Um, you know, again, moving spring ball up like we have, we don't get the fullest of winter um, strength training that we want. We kind of push that into the second part of spring and then parlay it into the summer. But uh, so. To see that all kind of um, transpire, that'll be a, a part two answer maybe as we go through camp. Um, we did redshirt Ron McGee and Keenan Caldwell this year that we knew we had players that we, you know, those seniors that you were talking about, we were kind of backlogged there a little bit and a lot of guys that played the year before. But as, as we've alluded to there is we, we've got to be better against the run and, uh, and be better as a defense. Uh, and being able to put pressure on the quarterback and other things. But uh, we feel that those are definitely going to be nice additions. You mentioned the athleticism off the top. Just mm -hmm. in that defensive line room as a whole, how much do you feel like you've improved just the athletic capabilities of those, of those guys? I think we've improved. I, I think that group got better interior-wise as the season went on. Um, you, you remember last year we talked about changing how we were going to try to attack it a little bit. I think we saw flashes of that at times. But there are some times I think we kind of reverted back against some people that we're um, in, into some old older habits and um, just way of doing it. And as we continue to to go as a defense, we that's something that as the coaches now have been off the road and doing things three days off of being, you know, getting into watching our cut ups from the season, addressing on how we want to make changes to it. We're still at an early part of that, and. Um, are, are going to continue to to make our, our changes and improvements. I want to circle back to December. Forgot to ask about the wide receivers, but with Siraz, Jared, and Keaton, just what stands out about the group of young wide receivers you added? That we added? Um, I, I think we we're able to, you know, when, when you work in an 11 personnel type offense, like, you know, we're so multiple, but you're still looking at as many of the base thoughts is that we, we've – we're able to recruit three different, we felt, body types. And, um, you know, 
Jared Sample's got an ac excellent speed. Uh, you know, he's, he's he's been in a good program. Develop all these guys come from really good football programs, which is also good because you know football is important and where it's been at and where it's been coached. Um, Siraz is probably one that just in, in body and gaining weight, he understands that. It's great that he's mid-year enrollee, and, and, uh, but he's highly competitive and uh, got a great attitude, very smart. Uh, Keaton's the one had a chance to see him play, and um, he's really a good football player. And, he, and, he, and he's not afraid to play on an excellent team, been asked to do a lot. A lot of times you don't see guys, and he's a guy that's going to wants to be on the punt return team and block punts. He's, he's going to block on the perimeter. He's not, he's not going to bat an eye about being on the front row of the kick return team. Things like that, and uh, guys like that have a chance to help us many ways and, and oftentimes early. What do you think about Jason's decision to come back for another year? I think it's awesome. It's something we were trying to work on for quite a while. And he was contemplating things a lot of different ways. And uh, even... Um, even when he decided to, to, at first, like he was going to just essentially move on and, and see what would happen, um, we told him that uh, we would want to keep having conversations and the door was open. And, and, uh, but we didn't want to pressure him and we didn't want him to feel like anything was going to be different the last month of the season. So um, extremely um, excited about it and what he can add to our team in different ways. Um, I, I still reflect on how many times have I said it in here now about how much he, better he, how well he had played in August, and he had good games for us during the season, and you saw that improvement. But I've also seen Jason now over, you know, really since the end of that game, and and, and that's challenging for a young man, and to continue to see his growth and and maturity and confidence and all the things you want people to be with or without football, um, that's been exciting. He's a, he's a good teammate. Um, he's never come in my office and disgruntledly talk about, you know, not feeling he got an opportunity or anything like that. He's very supportive and has a great relationship with Jalen. Those are all good things that this program needs and wants. So having him around for another year, I, I couldn't be more excited about that. And again, as, as things were playing out in, in the first part of the signing class, it worked out the way it was supposed to because, you know, we were able to keep the scholarship with an upperclassman and a guy that already helped this football team win games. Did you know before the bowl game that he was coming back or was that something no, you learned nope. after? It, it was afterwards. It was, it was, uh, I can't even, I'd have to look at my phone exactly when we all started, but it was around, you know, we, you know, after the game, kind of, we let, you know, actually, you know, I checked in on him a few times and stuff, but just to see how he was doing. And, but then we started talking a little bit more and, you know, and he had talked with uh, coach Gildersleeve a lot and, mm -hmm. and everyone thought it was trending in a good direction. And then he came, made the decision that he, you know, wanted to still be part of it. And again, I, as you guys know, um, to me, that's such a positive, you know, we talk about the additions to the team, but, you know, we're definitely in a good position of, of where this program used to be as far as attrition goes, especially mid-year attrition. And, uh, you know, that's something I'm proud of, um, something that our staff is proud of, and uh, we want to continue it. So when guys have that opportunity, and still elect to be here? Because he really had three options, right? He can go play somewhere else. He can just try to make it to the next level in some, some capacity, or he comes back. And uh, so for that to happen, I think, again, is things that we keep building upon. To follow up on that, how, how much of you know, guys like that and guys who had some success this past year, what, what, what can they do for all these newcomers and, and how quick can that happen as far as your culture goes? Well, again, uh, you know, today's a culture day for us. We, we do, a, uh, you know, this is the one day that the team's really all together, not just in their workout times. We, they, they do some conditioning and things and then they you know, shower up, whatever, and come back and then we do our culture talks and our culture teams and a lot of different things. So when they see that, there's a first part that is an, an action part where they're doing things where they get to see how we're going about things, the, the, the attention, the detail, the finish, 
how we're going to compete. But then they get to, then they get in groups and talk, and we talk about different things, and so they get to see that, and they get to see, um, you know, today it was a lot about goal setting and things like that, and you know what what's the proper way for to to set goals and realistic goals and how you're gonna how you're gonna look at them each and every day and and try to and it's not just whether or not your statistics are playing or whatever how you're gonna just get better at the day to day thing so when we have as many guys that have been through that already it's definitely gonna help and it helps with this mid year group and then again we're gonna need it to happen again in June. With that same concept in mind, did did this class, uh, you know, I hate to say the word easy. I've done that to you a couple of times, but but did this class come together a little easier because of that foundation that's that's in mm -hmm. place now? You can point to it to these kids you're recruiting and say, here's who we are, and it's a little easier for them to I, see. Maybe there's nothing easy at this thing right now. Uh, you know, I don't want to ever. There'll nothing. There'll be nothing that we'll ever take for granted. I, I think. But a one time through it, Matt, I, I do think that there's, you know, when a player comes and he has a player host versus a year, year or so, you know, a year ago, June versus, the, you know, probably, I don't know, I, I didn't look at it and I maybe should have was how much of this class had committed, you know, during the summer, okay, even before we played, even before we had a sellout or college game day or a bull bid, these guys, these guys wanted to be here, okay, and and now we've already turned many times through to the next class. Now, some of the success, um, I don't want to say easier, but we're getting, we're getting probably players that weren't necessarily interested in talking before wanting to have conversations. But the easier part, I, I think the nice thing was is that they've been able to see, um, yeah, the program and, and what's happening and how we go about it. But they, they've had a chance to see what this campus and community is about and, and everything else. And I think that's the other part is that they wanted to be here, not just because we went to a bowl game and, or, or any of the other things. Um, but the easier part is, um, if, I guess if, I, if you're looking for any of the easier parts is that this staff has been together. So the routine of the recruiting staff and the, uh, of, the, of the setting this up and how we're doing it and the player or players that are around these um, young men as they're talking, now they have tangible things about how it's done and what, where it's going that they can tell. It's not us talking about hopes, okay? So now we've talked about some production on the field, you know, and hopefully by the time the summer comes, we're going to have renderings and drawings and things about that are actually going to change and how this place is going to be better. And now things start to stack on top of each other and you have a chance to build a program for the long haul. The other thing, your schedule came out. Um, you probably knew it before yesterday, but um, anything jump Not out? Not necessarily. To you? Yeah? No? No, I, was, okay. I knew the first three games, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, anything jump out to you uh, immediately upon that first glance at, at the, whole, the whole slate? Not really. Um, you know, we know. You know, we've added four quality football programs to this conference. Um, you know, it's going to be. I haven't. I had somebody print it off for me. I'm. A, I'm still a paper guy that likes. To, but uh, um, I haven't looked at each team schedule. I saw maybe one or two that read an article quickly, but I didn't. You know, everybody's going to. I think talk about. You know, okay, what? Who, who doesn't have to play who and who has to play somewhere when it's cold. But they never talk about when everybody has to play somewhere when it's hot. I, I always found that interesting, but um, I don't know. And that's what happens once you get past a 10-team league and you stop playing everyone. That's why, um, you know, the division, no division thing I find very odd and, and, and things, but that wasn't your question. So, um, yeah, I... I you know where where we're at. We um, I like where the bye week is. I think it fits at a good time. It's probably one week earlier, two weeks earlier than this last year. Which was um, no two consecutive road games. Um, pretty exciting that uh, you know I, to me we had seven home games, and um, you know so hopefully that's something we'll try to do when we can. So all those things are are great and. Uh, and we get to play what uh, three of the yeah. three of the four, right? 
Okay, and we played Houston last year, so I guess we've played them all in a short period of time. Just going back to the transfer class a little bit, did you guys look at you know the playoff teams and be like, okay, there's something we want to take away and kind of bring into our transfer class? I mean, like, yeah, like just looking at how they you know got to where they were. Yeah, um, I guess I didn't look at it that way. When you look at like TCU and how you know they they were able to build it, I guess there's some uniqueness there. Uh, I think there's some geographical um, things that, that kind of help in that, that area. Not that Coach Dykes and his staff didn't do a great job. Um, you know, I, I think you kind of look at how the, some of the other ones are built and the consistency of, in which they are. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't say I, I have or we have that way. What, what we want to do is how are we going to create competition, upgrade each position each and every day. That's, that, that's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, until we can get something balanced, I, I still think we're in early stages of the portal and where, where it's, you know, I, I did look that I want to say somewhere about now I could be slightly off just under 20 schools or so signed under um, 15 high school players the first signing period. I don't know, you know, how many more will be added and like we did. So, um, you know, what does that mean? And okay, and, and then how many, you know, the next one is how many new players is everybody adding each year? What percentage of your scholarship roster is changing over? And then how many of those are actually seeing the field in the first year? Those are a lot of different things that um, we are trying to analyze a little bit more because uh, you know, the thing that was concerning, and I, I go back to that Texas game the first year was, how many young players we had on the field and guys that were really in most times you'd want to be redshirting them and putting weight on them. And, and, you know, we've got some really young guys that were making plays in the defensive secondary, but they were under 165 pounds playing against guys that were going to be in the league very shortly. And you can't, you, you can't survive in this league week in, week in and week out doing it that way. And, and so we're, you know, you're trying to watch what everybody's doing and and you know, you know, I stood before you, all of you in in May of twenty one talking about being a, a developmental program. That that's taken on a new term, though. I think because I don't think the days of, you know, everybody waiting two to three years to for their opportunity is not going to be the case anymore. And and you have to change with the times. And kind of going back to the schedule, did you guys get any preferences at all, and were you involved at all with the process? Uh, that's more a Travis Goff question than me. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I think you get to put a couple things in. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if they ask you if, uh, um, like, when's your fall break, or, or there's something in the in the homecoming area. Maybe I, I, we. I'm not really sure. I know who they're not asking, and that's Lance Leipold. So, uh, <laughs> but I, on that note, I, I do want to say one thing because I do want to thank our administration because there is one thing that I've tried to to make a push for, and, and I know it, the first two years it 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 you know we had to make a concession to play on Fridays, which isn't always great with high schools and especially our two local high schools in town. But to to uh, our administration. Uh, making it happen that we could open the season on a Thursday night, which you see a lot of things. There's a lot of benefits for that, especially on a Labor Day weekend and stuff. Hopefully our student crowd and other things, I know that that'd still be, but getting it out this early, having the opportunity there. So that is probably um, one thing I did get, okay? So. I'm with Dylan McDuffie. You guys obviously recruited him at Buffalo. Can you walk us through how that all transpired where I think he was headed to a different school and then Shows up here. Can you just walk us through that? What do you think he brings? Well, yeah, um, yeah. D Dylan was recruited. Dylan was one of the first. Uh, I got to double check now in my mind really fast. I would say, but based on our arrival, other than the, the quarterback that was there, Joe Lakata, when we when we got to Buffalo, probably one of the first. Much like we talk about things in state here, we we walked into a very similar state you know, situation in, in, in Buffalo. It wasn't like a lot of guys were going to stay. In the and, and play at UB, you know, it was and, but Dylan was one that did stay, and um, 
Um, you know, our last couple of years, you know, Dylan was the third back. The other two, uh, Jared Patterson's with the Commanders, and Kevin Marks, and, you know, was with the Chargers in camp. So he's with some good guys, but we use Dylan in different ways. Um, I, not this past season, but the 21 season, our first season here, under the new staff, Dylan rushed for over 1,000 yards, really came into his own, showed everything that we thought he could be as well. Um, he elected to uh, follow his position coach to uh, Georgia Tech. That was on the new staff there, the new staff at Buffalo. Then he left to go to Georgia, Georgia Tech, as well as the strength coach that was with us at Buffalo before Coach Gildersleeve. So um, then in, Coach Collins was let go midway through the year. There were some changes in direction of what they wanted to do in the backfield. And of course, then back here, um, you know, Kai Thomas had decided to leave the program. So, um, you know, we're looking for someone. We, we talked to a lot of people, and, and, and the more we went through it, it's a unique dynamic of what's in our back. You know, uh, Devin's been very productive in his two years. And uh, we know where he's at. Uh, Daniel started off really well. We've got uh, such, you know, um, you know, I say high hopes or whatever. You know, we, we've shown that when those two guys are together, we're productive. So we wanted to have somebody that um, was going to understand the situation, maybe been in that situation and understanding, but also could be multiple. And somebody that's hungry for an opportunity. And then the more times you're checking out things in this very fast time, of the portal, um, you know, we, we had many discussions in it and, uh, you know, offensive staff had discussions. And then Rob Ionello, Andy Cole, Nikki, and myself, we kind of went through some things, Grant Murray and player personnel, and we decided that it's our best interest um, to go with the known versus the unknown. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that's been noticed right away is, uh, you know, Dylan's work ethic as soon as he got in the weight room and how he goes about it. One of the other great things that, uh, you know, once once we made the decision and Dylan decided to commit, he sends me uh, four clips from last season while I was at Georgia Tech, and, and they weren't him carrying the ball. It was him playing on the punt team. And he sent me, and he goes, you send these to Coach Simpson and tell him I'm ready. And, you know, right now we don't have, we're, you know, that's that position group hasn't played a lot on special teams when we need them to. So when you bring someone that's that's doing that, that, that to me is something that's going to definitely help this football team. One more for me. Jacoby Davis, you look at the offer list and it's pretty legit. What did that recruitment look like from your perspective and what, what stood out about him? Yeah, you know, um, you know, through the recruiting process can be as you can, you guys follow it. So that, and, and you know when when the offer is there, when, who's all offered. But again, it's a you know a lot of positions. You don't and, and with the portal, you just don't know how many people are taking at each position. So as we went through and um, when we we're going through all of our options and talking about corners and younger versus older and things like that every time and and he comes from an outstanding high school program who plays deep into the playoffs year after year well you know when you get in December let alone during the season there's not a lot of time to take visits and sometimes guys don't they kind of just feel it's going to work out well we just kept hanging with it kept hanging with it and um you know, we made the decision to bring him on and uh, and to get him. I now he's not the tallest, and he know and and, uh, and and that sometimes can happen to guys and that you know they fall off on some people. But watching him and you know one thing we we know we got to do is and I think Kobe and Romello have made really good improvement as well as as Kalen Gurman is being physical. Uh, out on the perimeter and tackling. That's one thing Jacoby will do is is he'll hit you, and and he's not he you know, as we say he ain't scared, and and he's going to go out and play, and he's going to be physical. He's going to come up, and again everything that he's gone against, and, you know he's played against Keaton, and he's like you know Keaton couldn't believe he you know he he he's got great respect for him. So again, I think that's a an, another uh, you know another fine addition, and for us again to go into you know, 
get somebody from Dallas and get somebody from Austin and get somebody from Houston. You, you look at all the things we want to do in other places in this country, um, again, are going to pay dividends. All right. Doing all right? All right. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you all. What do you guys think?